Kushner Hurst version. Hello everyone, how are you going? This is a video on linear equations. Now this is completely unrehearsed. Uh, it's period five for me on a Wednesday. We're just hitting a new topic in the course, linear equations. So I thought I'll do a video and go through everything that I can around linear equations. Now it won't directly align to your book or the book we use or anything like that, or maybe not even to your course or the syllabus, but it's just a collection of ideas around linear equations. Where are we going to start? Well, let's start with the Cartesian plane. That's a good place to start. So our Cartesian plane, we've got X and Y, and you should know that anywhere on here we can define a point based on its X and Y coordinates. Let's just put one on for now. Uh, let's go here at 3 and here at 2. So that point there would be the point 3, 2. Now, hopefully you already know that, and you should. Now, if you don't, the rest is going to be a bit of a trouble for you. We've got our Cartesian plane and we've got our axes, we've got points. Good, we're on that. Right. Now let's talk about lines. Well, isn't a line really just a series of points that are all kind of in line, funnily enough? So let's go with the line here. I'll use this two again. So let's go with a line that just looks like that right there. Now that's a linear line, it's a straight line. Linear lines are straight lines. Now we have a formula that can work for us here. Now the formula is actually y equals mx plus c. Now we already know the x and the y part. Well, we might not know them, but those bits we don't figure out because they relate to our axes here. Okay? So leave them alone. Let's talk about the m part. The m is really our gradient. Okay? So m is equal to the gradient. And the gradient is really the slope of the line. Now let's talk about slope of the line before we get into the formula around the slope. If I'm like this, think about it like a hill. If I'm riding my bike, well this would be pretty hard, if I'm riding my bike and I'll try and draw my best bike that I can, I'm not sure that I will, but here we go. Oh that's not too bad, there we are. Oh there, that's me on the bike. Right. If I'm riding my bike up the hill, that's a pretty heavy hill to be riding up. It's a positive slope because as I'm riding along, I'm gaining height. So as I'm riding along, I'm gaining height. Or another way to think about it is if you're heading towards the first quadrant. Remember, this is the first, second, third, fourth quadrant. So if the line is heading some way towards the first quadrant, we're talking about a positive gradient or a positive slope. The other line, follow the green pen, would be one going this way which would be a negative slope because if I took my bike off here and put it on here, it's an easy coast down the hill. So positive slope, positive gradient, negative slope, negative gradient. Right, let's get into some calculation here. So we can write this in a couple of different ways. Okay, We can write this, we can write rise over run. So that is how far I go vertically divided by how far I go horizontally. I could also write that as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you're thinking, hang on, we've got two x's and two y's in there now. Well, to use this one, what you would do is you would pick two points on your graph, ideally ones you can read off real neat using the scale, and then what you would do is you would kind of be working this. This here is really x2 minus x1, or it's that x value minus that x value. All right? And then here would be y2 minus y1. That would be that y value minus that y value. So the difference would be here. So that's kind of like my, this is my rise and this is my run. Doesn't matter which formula you use. Any of these ideas are grand. Okay? Now what should I expect for that number coming out? Well, we kind of want to know what number we've got coming out because otherwise, well, you know, we're just throwing numbers about and we don't know what we should get. A gradient that is a 45 degree line. Let's do a sketch here. A gradient that is a 45 degree line. What am I talking about 45 degrees? I'm talking about the angle in there. If that is 45 degrees, then the gradient of that line is one. The gradient of that line is one. When I go steeper than that, the gradient gets bigger. When I go shallower than that, the gradient gets less. So this one here is going to be a gradient of 1. 
if I had a line that was up here, this might be a gradient of 2, steeper. And then if I keep going, I get steeper and steeper. If I come this way, this here might be a gradient of a half, because a half is less than 1. Now that's going to build us into a few ideas around gradient we've got to talk about. We've got the over here, we can see that it's going from half to 1 to 2. But what's the maximum value it can get to? Well, if I put a really steep line here, right, see how it's just, just outside of that, that axis. There's the axis and it's just not quite there. I'll try and draw it there, there we go. That line could have a gradient, I don't know, 100. Really big number. Now, we can get a, steeper than that and steeper than that, but effectively we can never get to an infinite gradient. Right? Think how these numbers are getting bigger as we go. Right? If we get to a really, really, really steep line, if it was vertically up, right? so I'm going to struggle to draw this, but if it was right along that, that axis, let's break back into here. Rise over run. Rise over run. Well, I can really see how I can make a triangle there and get my rise and my run. I can see it here. I can see it here. Rise, run, rise, run. But if the line is going vertically up, then I can work out a rise, but the run, well, it didn't go anywhere. So it actually, when we get to a vertical line, this falls apart. This becomes some number, let's say uh, 10 over 0. If we divide by 0, there's no answer. How many times does 0 go into 10? Forever. There's no answer. So we can't have a vertical line that we write in this sort of way. We write it a little differently, okay? So hold on that. The other way we go, let's go shallower. Let's go shallower all the way around. Now this number here, as we go shallower, is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, we're going to have a horizontal line. Now again, we write horizontal line formulas a little differently. I'll get to them in a minute. But just get that idea that when we're just above the axis, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the way to this point where we kind of ran out of, out of numbers. Okay? Now the same thing, the same thing is going to happen for these downward sloping lines. Right? The difference will be that one going down here is going to have a gradient of negative 1. If I go a steeper negative, that might have a gradient of, I don't know, negative 3. All right? So the same thing happens down here, just that they're negative. Right, that's a whole lot on gradient there. Now that's one part of our formula over here. I'm going to rub this off, we're going to do a bit more work. Rewind if you need to see that part again. So, let's get rid of this. Let's go and talk about our C value. So our C value, or this part here, that's our y-intercept. Now, where do we find that? Well, in this line here, that's that point right there. It's the point where it crosses over the y-axis. Right? So in this particular blue line, the answer would be 2. So the y-intercept would be 2. On this green line, I'm going to make that point there minus 1. In the green line, that point or the y-intercept would be minus 1. Okay? Now, let's put this together in a bit of a question. Let's get rid of this. Again, rewind if you need to see that part again. Let's put it together in a question. All right. Let's suggest that we have the axes, and we're told about this point here, which is 1, 1, right there. And we also know the point, uh, actually, no, I'll change that. I'll make that a little, a little bigger. 2, 1. There we go. And we also know the point 4, 5, right here. So we've got the point 4, 5, and we've got the point 1, 2. Now the question would probably say, given the following points, determine the equation of the line. That's what it would say. Determine the equation of the line. This is our equation of a line. So we're trying to get all the numbers into here. The first thing I'd do is graph it up so you know what you're looking at. The next thing I would do is to put a line through those two points so I know the line that I'm trying to figure out. My next step would be to work my gradient. So I'm going to make myself a triangle in here. There we go, right angle triangle. Because that's where I'm going to get my rise over my run idea from. Remember, along this base is going to be the run, and here is going to be the rise. 
So I'd say, okay, M is going to equal rise over run. The rise here. Well, that's the Y value part of it, isn't it? The Y values give me the rise. So if I go 5, take away 2, that gives me 3. Or I could have seen that here on the Y axis. So that's going to be 3 over. Then the X values, they are going to give me the, uh, the run part of it. So they're going to give me this part. So 4 take away 1 is also going to give me 3. Follow the colour coding there. 3 divided by 3 is going to be 1, and I made this question work out nice and neatly for us. So that means my gradient is 1. For every step forward I make on the graph, I go up one step. Or if I step two steps forward, I go up two. So I've got my gradient. So that number there, I'm going to slot right in there for M. Okay. The second part, the C part, well that's going to be this value back here. Now you might be able to, and on this one you can, I can see if I go back one step, I need to go down one step. Why? The gradient was one. So back one step, down one step. Do the same idea. Negative one, negative one. All right? And I would end up here at the value of one. Now, I can see that myself, and you might not yet, but let's do it another way so you don't have to kind of play and try and think maybe this will work. Put this guy in. So can you see how I would have y equals one x? plus C. Now if I take either of these two points, that one or that one, let's put that into here. Here's the Y value, 5 equals 1 times, remember this is times in here, 1 times 4 plus C. Well, let's tidy up this times bit. Isn't this 5 equals 4 plus C? Isn't therefore C has to be 1? And then given that C is equal to 1, and I know M equals 1, I could write this as Y equals 1X plus 1. Now if you prefer, we don't need to put the 1 there. Because if we don't have a number in front of the variable, it is 1. So that there would be the equation of this line. Now what could we get as follow-on questions here? Well it could then say, if, I'll add it in here, if x equals 10, determine y. Now that would be a fair follow-on question. So what would we do? We take the 10, we put the 10 in here, y equals 10 plus 1, well therefore y is going to equal 11. So the point that would be on the line would be the point 10, 11. Now we could do that the other way around as well. We could be given the y value and asked to determine the x value. Well, we just substitute it in here and then rearrange. So whichever way you get it, it's much the same idea, just make sure you put it in in the right spot. Okay? What else could we get given? Well, I could be given a point. What about this? Given uh, 6, 8, the point 6, 8. And the question might say, determine if that is on the line. If on the line. Now, that question is actually no different than this one that you were just given. All you do now is you say, well, okay, if this point is on the line, then when I take 6 and I substitute it in there, I should get 8. Now, have a look. If I take 6 and I substitute that in there, 6 plus 1 is 7. That doesn't equal this one. Therefore, I would say, no, it is not on the line. It is not on the line. But if the question said 6 and 7, then that would say that was on the line. So I'm just checking whether the formula agrees with what's here. If it does, it's on the line. If it doesn't, it's not on the line. Right, now, rewind and watch that again if you need to. We need to talk about horizontal and vertical lines. That's another little one. Right, all this is going. Let's get back to horizontal and vertical lines and let's see how we do that. So, graph it up again. Now, let's look at a vertical line first. There we go, there's one. Okay, now I'm going to say that it crosses right here at 5. Okay, doesn't matter, but that'll work for us. Now, imagine this, this y axis is all graduated up 1, 2, 3, all of that, right? Nothing, nothing different there. 
So this point right here, wouldn't that be the point 5, 2? And wouldn't this point here be the point 5, 3? And wouldn't this one be the point 5, 4? And wouldn't this one down here be the point 5, negative 1? And this one, 5, negative 2. Can you see how every single point on that line, the x value is the same every time? The x value is the same every time. So in order to write an equation for vertical lines, we ignore the y part. We don't care about it. We simply write x equals 5. Because every point up and down that line has an x value of 5. So if you need to write the equation for a vertical line, it's just x equals whatever the number is of wherever it is. Now in the same way, in the same way, see if you can jump forward with this. Let's use one here. That horizontal line, well, this point here would be the point minus one, one. This point here would be the point one, one. This point here would be the point two, one. This point here would be the point negative two, one. Can you see how the second number is always one, which is the value that goes through here? So in order to write a horizontal line, we ignore the x value. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything. We just look at the y value. And because the y value for this line is always 1, we just write that as y equals 1. All right. Let me just move this one over so it's close to the line. So if we want a horizontal line, we just say y equals wherever it crosses over the y-axis. If we want a vertical line, we write x equals, and wherever it crosses over the x-axis is our number. Right, quick recap. Let's go back. Real quick recap. We have Cartesian plane. We have points on them, x value, then y value. If we have a straight line, we can write it in the format of y equals x plus, well, we'll start again, y equals mx plus c. We know that m is our gradient. Right, rise over run, x2 minus, sorry, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, gradient done. C value, C is my y-intercept, that's where it crosses over the y-axis, find that, put them together, we write an equation, I don't know, I'm making this one up, something like that. From there, we could then check if any points fall on the line. If we're given an x value, we can calculate the y. If we're given the y value, we can calculate the x. Last thing that we did was horizontal and vertical lines. A vertical line, we rate it based upon where it crosses over the x-axis. So that is going to be x equals some number. Whereas a horizontal line is based about where it crosses over the y-axis, and therefore that one's going to be y equals something. A couple of things I forgot as I was doing that quick summary. Remember our quadrants, first, second, third, fourth quadrants? That's handy to know. And the last thing I forgot as I was going through, remember positive gradient going up towards quadrant one, negative gradient going down towards quadrant four. Another thing that I forgot, lots of things to remember, is these lines, they go on forever in both directions. They go on forever. So we put arrowheads on them. Arrowheads. They go on forever. I think that's everything you need to know about linear. I probably have missed a couple of things out. I'll get back on here maybe tomorrow or the next day and do some uh, videos of questions. But if you need any questions done, please send it to me. Put it in the comments. Uh, ask a question. Whatever. And I'll get up here and do it. Hope this has helped you guys. Catch you later.